Hey guys, so I hope that y'all are holding up well, um, especially if you're still under quarantine and closure like we are here in Georgia. Um, we will be on lockdown until I believe it's April 30th now, so but who really knows? Could totally change tomorrow. Um, but my name is Jesse Fearon from JesseFearon.com, a blog that I started many, many years ago where I share my family's real life on a budget and our successes and failures with money. Um, we are a 100% debt free family, which, yes, does in fact include our mortgage. So we have no mortgage, no debts, which obviously has been a tremendous benefit to us during this crazy, crazy time of just so much uncertainty. So many of us by now know that um, a lot. Lot of the experts, people that are super, super smart, people that um, are scientists and doctors and who kind of deal with pandemics and um, viruses and all sorts of things, they are saying that we should be expecting COVID-19, the novel coronavirus that's out right now, um, to resurface again in the fall. Um, I don't think anybody knows exactly when it's going to go Way, but they are expecting it to come back in the fall. They're expecting it to follow typical patterns of the seasonal flu. And so I want to kind of share something with you guys because, you know, those same scientists and doctors um, are predicting that they will not have a vaccine available until early 2021. Um, and many people are saying that even if they got a vaccine um, before then, that it may not have gone through enough human trials, so it may not be safe. Um, that's just all sorts of things that are being said right now. Um, so realistically, we could potentially go into the fall of this year of 2020 um, with another rise of COVID-19 cases, and um, we could be facing quarantines and closures again. So let's talk about that. Like right now, this is all so new to us, right? Like we're all like living through this pandemic. We're all trying to figure it out, figure out all these different things where, you know, kind of going through this traumatic event together. Um, we've never lived through a pandemic before, so we haven't known what to expect. However, though, if this happens again in the fall, we can't say that. We can't say we've never been through a pandemic before because, well, we have. And so that's why I want to encourage you to right now, while we're living through this um, time period, I mean, we've kind of been given almost a gift in a way because we're kind of living in the past, present, and future because we're literally living through a moment in history um, as well as we can take right now the things that we're learning about right now for us and for our families, you know, financially, health-wise, um, food-wise, all sorts of things, right? We can take what we're learning right now and we can use that to plan and prepare for this happening again in the fall. Now, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not God. I don't actually know if COVID-19 is going to happen again in the fall, but I'm going to go ahead and just act out of an abundance of caution and trust the people that are way smarter than me who are saying that it will happen again in the fall um, and just prepare as if it will and pray to God that it doesn't happen again. But I'm going to go ahead and prepare. Um, me and my family are going to prepare for it to happen again. And so if you went into this current pandemic with little to no savings, I would really like to encourage you to make a plan on paper to build up your emergency fund. I would suggest having at least, like bare minimum, at least three months of your living expenses saved up. And as I've mentioned many times before in some of my other videos, how you figure out your living expenses, you need to go back. I would suggest going to January and February's um, bank statements. Okay, so wherever you spend your money, whether it's checking account, credit cards, every place that you spend money from, you need to pull your bank statements from January and February. Um, I'm going to say not March, um, definitely not December because December has Christmas um, spending in it. Um, but probably not March's bank statements only because for many of us, we went into the quarantine enclosures during March. We saw this rise, a surge in food prices and shortages and all sorts of things. So our spending isn't going to be quote unquote normal, right? So we're going to use a January and February bank statements um, for this exercise. You're going to go through those bank statements and you're going to go through it with a fine tooth comb and you're going to find all of your essential expenses. Okay. So your essential expenses, your mortgage, your rent, your utilities, your you know fuel for your car, even though obviously most of us aren't going places right now, we still want to include it within this number. Um, your groceries, again, Obviously, grocery prices right now are a little crazy, but that's why we're using January and February as our baseline fine, um, because kind of March and April are kind of like the outliers, if you will. Um, but January and February should be pretty consistent of what 
quote unquote normal would be. So grocery uh, expenses and any other essential expenses that you have for your family's bare bones survival. Okay. So, um, and you're going to tally up those numbers and divide by two because we're only taking into account two months worth of expenses versus three. So you're going to divide that number by two. And then once you've divided that number by two times it by three, and that is going to give you the amount of money, your goal amount of money that you need to have saved into your emergency fund before the fall of 2020. Obviously, I would love to tell you to have, you know, six, nine months, 12 months worth of expenses saved. Um, but I know that so many people went into this pandemic with nothing saved at all. Um, so I'm trying to give you sort of a realistic goal that you may be able to achieve, especially if you have lost your job and you are on unemployment, trying to save up six months um, between now and then may not be possible. But if we really, really hustle and work really, really hard, more than likely you can at least achieve a three month emergency fund goal. So here in the fear and household, this is what we're doing. Me and my husband, um, we have sat down and we have actually made a plan of action. We have written down our fear and families plan of action if COVID-19 shows up again. And so I kind of want to share with you um, our process for creating this plan of action and the things that are included. So my husband and I, we are using an artificial date of October 1st um, as our goal date um, for some of these goals. Obviously, COVID-19, if it does happen again, it could happen. It could hit in September. It could hit in November. It could hit in January. Like, we don't know when it's going to hit, if it is even going to hit. Um, but we just are giving ourselves the date of October 1st, um, just so we have something um, to kind of, you know, pin the tail on the donkey, if you will. Um, and so we, um, we have listed out a specific amount of money that we want to have saved in our emergency fund by then, by October 1st. Um, we have also listed out our contingency plan because our youngest child turns five in October and our kids, they only get a quote unquote real birthday party every five years. So she's supposed to have like a big birthday party with all her friends from school and you know, like that type of thing. It's supposed to be a very big and special birthday party for her. And so we have made a plan for if the quarantines and closures happen again, and we can't have that party for her, we've already put into place what we're going to do for her um, instead as well as we have already decided on schooling, what we're gonna do as far as schooling is concerned, because I will be honest with you, like right now doing this digital learning stuff, my kids are public school kids. Um, and I can just speak from my personal experience right now. I have not enjoyed this digital learning day stuff at all. It, my kids haven't enjoyed it. It has not worked for my family. I know there are several people that have loved it and it's working great for them. It is not working great for this family at all. Not only that, um, I have a couple of really big projects that are going to be due um, come uh, in November and December of this year. And so I'm going to be like in straight like hustle mode during that time. And I can't have my laptop being used um, for hours and hours on end while my kids try to do their schoolwork. Like that's not going to work for our family um, because my husband being self-employed and being in the construction industry, um, he's already taken a hit um, to his business during this pandemic. So it's very possible that if it hits again in the fall, his business will take another hit as well. And so we need to prepare our household for me to take over as the breadwinner. Um, so that's in our plan of action as well, as well as what it will look like if we have to touch our emergency fund. We have been fortunate enough that right now we have not had to touch our emergency fund. We're not living off our emergency fund right now. Um, my husband is still able to continue to pay himself from his business. Um, so we haven't had to touch our emergency fund. And so, but we have it written down like what it's going to look like if we have to touch our emergency fund, exactly how much money we plan to pull from that emergency fund every single month or week, you know, we have it listed out exactly what our plan is going to be, exactly what our expected budgets should be during that time frame as well. And so I would really love to encourage you and your family to sit down and have a similar conversation and to map out a plan of action. Um, if you are married, I would encourage you to go to your spouse tonight and just say, hey, honey, um, you know, all the scientists, all the crazy intelligent people are saying that COVID-19 could hit again in the fall. And so maybe this Sunday night, um, I'd love, you know, you and me to kind of sit down after the kids have gone to bed, um, over a couple of beers, whatever, and sit down and kind of talk about, um, you know, what your expectations are if it happens again, what we can expect if it happens again, kind of develop sort of a plan of action for our family. Um, just in case if it does happen again, we're not caught off guard and we can hopefully be as prepared as we possibly can be. Um, so hopefully we don't struggle. Um, again or struggle in the future. 
And I would encourage you to give them a couple of days notice, um, just so that way they kind of spend some time, you know, kind of going back and forth in their own head and kind of processing things out and kind of how, um, how they, what they, what their expectations and what they would like to see, um, happen in the fall. And then that way you both can come to the table with your expectations, kind of the things that you want to see or don't want to see happen in the fall. And then you guys can kind of hash it out and kind of figure it out. And I would encourage you to actually put this plan on paper. Don't just like let it float around up here. Like one of you write it down, type it out, whatever, but put the plan plan on paper. So then that way, if it happens in the fall, your family knows that's the plan. This is the plan of action. This is what we're doing right now to prepare. This is what's going to happen if, in fact, you know, COVID-19 happens again, the quarantines and closures are going to happen. You know, mom and dad got to work from home. Um, what's that going to look like? What's it going to look like as far as schooling for your kids? If you have kids in school, um, what's that going to look like for them? You don't necessarily have to have a full-fledged schedule planned out right now because maybe some things will change between here and there. But I would encourage you um, to kind of think about what's kind of currently going on in your household, um, you know, like with all these kids on all these different devices, or if you only have one computer in your household and you know, like you have four kids and they're all having to use this one computer, like, you know, what are maybe some things that you've learned during this current time that might help you in the future um, to facilitate that better? Like, maybe do you need to start putting, a, you know, set up a sinking fund? Do you maybe need to set up a sinking fund for to, to buy you know each one of your kids their own tablet or or another computer just so then that way you have an extra computer to use on hand? Um, do you need to set up a sinking fund so you can buy a printer? Because God bless all the parents that don't have a printer or a scanner. I don't know how y'all are doing this digital day learning stuff because my printer and scanner are being used. They are definitely getting their uh, their money's worth right now. Um, but you know, like maybe there's some sinking funds that you need to set up right now so you can purchase a few things. I mean, I don't go crazy because again, COVID-19 might, might not happen again in the fall. Um, but I do think we that it's prudent to prepare now in case if it does. Um, but maybe there are some things that you're like, okay, yeah, we need to set aside some seeking funds to purchase, you know, a couple of things. So then that way, you know, if a digital day learning needs to happen again, we have, you know, we have a way to facilitate that without driving each other crazy and pulling our hair out in the process, right? Or maybe your contingency plan will be that you will officially pull them from school and just officially homeschool them for the remainder of the school year. Maybe that's going to be your plan. Um, and if that is going to be your plan, I would encourage you to do the research now on curriculums, on all those things, on their costs and everything. So then that way, if COVID-19 does happen, you got that sinking fund prepared, you just take that money from that sinking fund, you buy that homeschool curriculum, you pull your kids out, you've got all that information sitting there ready to go. You know what the process is, you're prepared to pull them out of school and to officially homeschool them. Obviously, there's no right or wrong answer here. Um, nobody can tell you what you and your family should do, but by sitting down now and kind of hashing out all these details and getting it all out on paper, your family is going to be prepared if COVID-19 happens. So definitely, you know, if you have kids at home, um, that are in school, definitely write down what the schooling plan is going to be for them. Um, write down any sinking funds that you need to set up now um, to maybe prepare that if COVID-19 does happen, you have the funds set aside, ready to buy anything, whether it's devices or homeschool curriculum or just whatever. You just have the sinking funds that are set aside, ready to go, that you can use to purchase whatever it is that you need to facilitate your plan. Make sure that your savings goal um, is realistic and that you can meet it um, in enough time. Um, and make sure that you set up a savings goal. If you don't already have an emergency fund in place of, like I said, at least three months, um, I would encourage you that if you have a three-month emergency fund right now, I'd encourage you to set the goal to have a six-month emergency fund saved up before the fall. If you have a six-month emergency fund, I would encourage you to set up a, to make it a goal to have a nine month emergency fund set up before the fall. If you have nine month emergency fund, I would encourage you to make it a goal to set up a 12 month emergency fund. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is just because the more, the more beefier we can make our emergency funds, the, the, the heavier we can make them, the more prepared our family will be going into potentially another pandemic. Um, and just the better we will come out on the other side of this, um, especially if it hits harder the second time around, um, which is very possible. That, again, not God, don't have a crystal ball, don't actually know, but it is possible that it could hit harder the second time. Um, there's this thing called a double dip recession. Um, it happened in 1918 with the Spanish flu that hit, that pandemic that hit. And it's very possible that we will experience it again. And the reality is, friends, that we just can't keep on expecting our governments to bail us out because at some point somebody's going to run out of money 
we just can't keep printing money is not going to work well for us in the future if we continue to do so. And so that's why I'm saying that we all need to do our part. We all need to plan and prepare as if this is going to happen again. Hopefully it doesn't, but we just need to right now while we're still living in it, we need to plan and prepare for it potentially happening in the future. And if you are currently one of the over 16 million people who had to file for unemployment um, and you're kind of watching this video like, how in the world am I going to save any money right now? I'm living on unemployment. I would encourage you to get creative, ransack your homes, get anything and everything that you could possibly sell and sell it. Like people right now are very willing to buy secondhand. Um, Facebook Marketplace is fabulous, fabulous for selling stuff. I mean, we have sold so many stuff so quickly on Facebook Marketplace. It's funny. Um, obviously, we're live selling all the money. Um, we're doing no contact drop off type of things. Um, you know, and of course, we're live selling all of the items that we are selling before we give it to them. And I'm sure that they, the people we're selling them to, are live selling them themselves. That would just be smart to do, anyways. Um, but right now, people are very willing to buy secondhand um, because one, stores are closed. Um, two, some people are not willing to wait on slower shipping times to for things to come to their homes. And if you've got the item they need, they're willing to to pay you for it. So I would encourage you to ransack your home and just start selling stuff um, that you don't need or want anymore. And then you take that cash and you use that cash to suck it away in your emergency fund. You just keep on socking away all the money that you possibly can um, so you can meet your goals. And along with your COVID-19 family plan that you're making, your family's plan of action, um, I encourage you to, as well in there, plan for in case if you have to use that emergency fund. Um, what's the budget going to look like? How much money are you actually going to pull from that account um, You know, every week or month? Like, How are you going to pay yourself from that emergency fund? What's that going to look like? Because um, you want to go ahead and have that on paper so everybody's expectations are the same for if and when this happens again. Another point, if you are a business owner, if you're a community leader, if you are a church leader, if you're a pastor, whatever, if you are in any form of leadership, I would like to encourage you to do a similar thing for your business, for the community that you're in charge of, for the church you're in charge of, for the organization that you're in charge of. Um, do the same thing, you know, virtually meet with whomever you need to meet with, but have hash it out and figure out a plan of action. So if this happens again, your your business, your church, your organization, your community is prepared for it to happen again. Um, so you're not caught off guard because again, like I said, we can't say in the fall that we've never lived through a pandemic because well, we already have. So prepare now for the possibility again. Don't know this is actually happening. I feel like I have to keep saying that because I feel like YouTube or somebody else is going to be like, oh, it's fake news. I don't know if it's actually going to happen or not. But I'm just saying that from the very smart people that are saying it's going to happen again, I think it's wise that we prepare as if it's going to. Um, hopefully it won't, but you never know. So. So leave me a comment below if you want more videos where I am discussing possible ways of preparing your family financially for COVID-19 happening again in the fall um, or what you want to see more of from me. 